Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Today we're going to be going over how to work with time in Premiere Pro. How to slow things down and speed them up, how to ramp your speed, and how to stop it completely. So let's get started. Time is at the basis of everything you do in Premiere Pro, and you can work with time in a variety of ways that can give you a huge amount of control over your project. So let's get started by going over one of the main ways you can work with speed in your video. Take a video clip that you have in your timeline and right click on it. About midway down the list of options you should see one that says speed slash duration. Here you have a very basic way of working with speed. When I say basic, I mean it contains options for changing parameters for your entire clip. So anything you do in this section will affect the whole clip, not just certain parts of it. Right now our speed is set for 100%, meaning that it'll play in real time speed. If we change this amount to 200%, our clip will play at double speed. If we set it to 50%, it'll play at half its normal speed. You can also change the duration of the clip length if you want it to last an exact amount of time. Doing this will automatically change the speed percentage to slow down your clip or speed it up as much as you need it to fit that new time length. Below it you have three settings. Reverse speed does exactly what you'd expect and plays your clip in reverse. Any changes you make to speed will then be applied as it normally would, but your clip will still play in reverse. Next is maintain audio pitch. If you leave this box unchecked, you'll notice that your clip's audio will either get very high or low pitched if you speed up or slow your clip down respectively. If you check this audio box, it'll keep your audio pitch the same regardless of how much you change your clip's speed. Sally, we're a small startup. Sally, we're a small startup. You don't have the resources to go after every little rabbit trail. Finally, the last option is Ripple Edit. By selecting this box, whatever changes you make will impact the rest of your timeline. If you shorten a clip, everything behind it will maintain its normal position in relation to the end of that clip. So if you make the clip play faster and shorten the clip length as a result, your timeline will scrunch towards it to keep its position, like so. And if you leave it unchecked, your clip will change but nothing else in your timeline will be affected. Now most of us when we hear about slowing things down, think about super slow motion and how awesome those types of clips look. But it's important to remember that just because you reduced your clip's speed, doesn't mean that it'll look the way you want it to. Let's take a look at a clip whose frame rate is 24 frames per second, and we'll reduce its speed to 25%. This means that it'll play at one quarter its original speed, and we can see that it doesn't look very smooth. It's incredibly choppy, and it doesn't have a desirable look. This is because reducing speed by one quarter means our resulting clip isn't playing at 24 frames per second, but 6 frames per second. If we want to have smooth motion, we need to shoot at a higher frame rate. Here's the exact same shot, but at 96 frames per second. And when we drop it down to one quarter speed, it plays at 24 frames per second. This looks way smoother and much better. As a general rule, if you want slow motion clips to look smooth, they need to be able to match the frame rate of our timeline. So for our 96 frame per second clip on a 24 frame per second timeline, we shouldn't drop its speed below 25% if we want to keep it looking smooth. If you're in a pinch and you don't have any footage that you can have shot at a higher frame rate, you may be able to push your clip a little bit farther by adding what's called optical flow. If you go back to your speed slash duration section, you can see that there's a drop down menu for time interpolation. What this does is tell Premiere how to present new frames to you. By default, it's set to frame sampling. With this setting, Premiere will simply play each frame one after the other. And when it's slowed down, this setting will simply spread out all the frames of your clip to appear in regular succession. And we can see what it looks like with a normal 24 frame per second clip slowed down to a quarter speed. But if we select frame blending, we can see that Premiere takes almost what looks like an overlap of two frames to add where there would otherwise be missing or duplicated frames. This can get rid of choppy playback, but it'll still give your footage a kind of ghosting effect. But lastly, if you select optical flow, you'll notice that Premiere needs to render quite a bit but it'll have done a surprisingly good job of interpreting what an additional frame would look like between the two that is filling the gap between. It makes your footage look way smoother, but you'll notice that it might have a hard time with some of the sections of your video. So you can see that there's pros and cons to each of these interpolation settings. 
Try each of these on your clip if you want to make your footage look better after a speed change. We've gone over how to change the overall speed of your clip, but what do you do if you need to change the speed of different parts of your clip over time? To do that, we need to do what's called time remapping. If you select your clip and go to the Effect Controls panel, you should see a parameter at the bottom called Time Remapping. What this allows you to do is set different keyframes for speed at different points along your clip. So for example, let's take the playhead and move it to a spot here during the clip, and make a keyframe. Now to make a second one, move the playhead to a new location and hit the keyframe button again. You should see the keyframes appear here in your Effect Controls panel. But you can also see them on your clip if you change the kind of keyframe that it shows. Right click on your clip and go all the way down to the bottom to show clip keyframe. Here you have the ability to see different keyframes for your clip, and opacity should be set by default. So go to time remapping and select speed. Now you should see the keyframes that you just created. You can also create them in this mode by hovering over this line and holding the control or command key and clicking. Now that you have this setup, you can move different sections of your clip up or down on either side of each keyframe and your speed for that section will be increased or decreased. So let's try starting at a normal speed, slowing down, and then going back to normal speed. Nice, but we can make this transition between normal and slow speed more gradual by ramping our speed. Drag this keyframe bar over and you'll increase the distance over which the change takes place. And this little lever will affect the rate, making it a little bit more dramatic rather than gradual. You can also make these changes the same way from within the effect controls panel. Great, so we've learned how to slow down and speed up our clip, as well as how to ramp our speed over time. But what do you do if you want to stop your clip completely? For that, simply take your playhead to the place where you want your footage to stop. Then, right click and select Add Frame Hold. This will automatically cut your footage in two, and the section of clip after your playhead will be entirely the frame at which your playhead was over. So if we play back, we can see that our footage plays as normal until this point, where it stops completely. It's that simple, and this new piece of footage can be extended infinitely. But if you'd like to stop your clip and then have it start up again, just choose instead Insert Frame Hold Segment. Now a small section of that still frame will be added between where the cut was made and the remainder of your normal clip. And like we said before, you can increase and decrease the length of the still frame easily. So if we play back, this is what we get. Great! And guys, that's it! We've successfully learned a lot of ways that we can manipulate time inside of Premiere Pro. This is such a useful skill to be able to use in your videos. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.